Welcome everybody back to the Friar Talk podcast and YouTube channel. For today's episode, we're going to be doing something a little bit different. Not really doing a, a normal topic, I'd say, but we're just going to be doing kind of a, a Bob Melvin appreciation video because I think at this point in the season, I think every single Padre fan, especially if you watched the debacle last year and you watched it late in the season, you saw some of the really, really rough mismanagings by Jace Tingler. I think we're all very appreciative of Bob Melvin right now. And the Padres are playing a lot better than what their current run output is, what their current pitching is. Like they're overperforming right now. And they're winning a lot of close games. And they seem like they're able to scrape together a lot of wins. And I think at the forefront of that is their new manager and Bob Melvin. And he has been absolutely fantastic. So I wanted to kind of do a, a quick segment on Bob Melvin today, just kind of to give him some appreciation because I think it is well deserved. Chase. How do you feel about, about about Bob Melvin so far? I mean, it's made all the difference in the world when you look at it. Um, you look at the team, you look at who's hitting kind of just the averages of everybody, and you look at where we stand in the stand, how many, how many losses we have. I don't think we would be anywhere close to where we were at if Tingler was our manager still. I mean outside of Manny Machado and Eric Hosmer, surprisingly, the bats have been dead quiet. The only thing that's helped us is the starting pitching. The pulpen struggled a little bit. We've lost Pierce Johnson. We've lost another, uh, we lost Austin Adams and um, guys have been underperforming. I mean, Bob Melvin has been put in a really tough situation early on, you know, Tatis is out until at least next month, maybe possibly early July. You lost Voigt. You lost Myers. You lost two key bullpen pieces. And you're still 19 and 10. He's, you know, just been a rock in the clubhouse. The lineups have been very good, very consistent. Some guys have just haven't been performing. I haven't had any problems with when he's pulled a pitcher. I haven't had any problems. Anytime he's uh, used a guy from the bullpen. Actually, I mean, there's a couple times. I mean, we just don't like Craig Stammen. Tim Hill's been underperforming in certain situations where you'd go, oh, yeah, you know what? I probably wouldn't have put him there. But when you look at it statistically, he made the best moves every single time. And I can't complain. I mean, everything he's done has been right. He hasn't made any real mistakes that, you know, you would get upset. I mean, if we look at last year, I feel like every single week we were upset about something Jay Stingler did. Oh, Jay Stingler shouldn't have pulled this guy here. He shouldn't have put in this guy in the, uh, from the bullpen. He, you know, he shouldn't have subbed this hitter. Oh, he shouldn't have done this. It felt like every single week we were nitpicking Jay Stingler about something, and we haven't been able to do it through the first almost 30 games of the season. He's been amazing. Uh, I mean, Everyone in the clubhouse respects him. There's been no drama. Everybody seems happy. They're playing fun baseball. It's just been amazing. It's been a complete 180 compared to last season. So props to Bob Melvin. Yeah, and I, I think you bring up a lot of the things and just in terms of the play, in terms of substitution, how you're bringing pitchers in. Not even last year too, Chase, but in 2020, we would question what Tingler was doing all the time. Big dude, why are you putting this guy in here? And it wasn't even like you said weekly basis. It felt like almost a nightly basis at times. Like it was, and it wasn't always a big thing. But it'd be like, why would you do that? Like that doesn't make any sense. The biggest thing that we would that we would absolutely rip Tingler for was why do you pull the pitchers so early? Like when any any time anyone gets on base because last year it felt like he was managing that season early on, especially like the 2020 season, like the 60 game season. It felt like he didn't under, have the understanding of like, Oh, this is a marathon. This team is about to die. This bullpen is about to die. And then what do you know? You pitch the bullpen to death. You're it's, it's hurting. So that's a huge thing, but not only that, look at how the players talk about Bob Melvin. Will Myers said a while back, and this actually goes to the whole coaching staff, but Will Myers basically came out and said, yeah, it feels like night and day to, compared to like my past seasons in San Diego. It feels like we have four managers. It feels like we got Bob Melvin. I mean, we've proved we've uh, you know really praised Ruben Diablo a lot, but I mean, all these guys, 
Manny Machado came out. This is something that you would have never seen with Jace Tingler. Manny, Manny Machado came out, and he said that he didn't want to be a DH, and then the next day, Bob Melvin put him in his DH. It, it wasn't like a big deal, but Jace Tingler would have never done that. You don't feel like the professionalism of, of like the, I know what I'm doing, like, I'm the leader of this team, I'm the decision maker of this team, that you, like you feel with Bob Melvin. You've heard what Manny Machado said about him. You've heard what all these guys have said about him. And it's definitely impacted the play early on. It's definitely impacted the production, I think the win total. I don't think this team would have the same record at 19 and 10 right now, tied for the second best record in the NL if Jay Stingler is your manager, if Andy Green's your manager, if really a lot of guys are your manager, not just past Padre managers, but Bob Melvin is a very, very good and established manager throughout his time with the Oakland A's. And we talked about it when we got him. Like, this guy's going to make a huge difference. That was one of the biggest things we talked about in the offseason of, hey, a lot of guys weren't added, and we were definitely upset about that. And I think you're already seeing some of the frustration with that with this outfield. But we're like, hey, at the end of the day, like this team probably – this team could have flipped 15 wins in terms of the adjustments in the co- coaching staff. And I feel like already early on, like we've already seen that, Hey, this is probably going to be the case. This might not be the best lineup. This might be a lineup that struggles a lot, but the pitching's good. The decision making is good. We've seen a lot of small ball actually been incorporated into the games. You see guys stealing a lot of bases. I think Manny Machado right now is six stolen bases. I don't know if you saw that chase. It's either, either five or six. Those are all coming late in the game when it's like, Hey, I need to steal a bag. And a lot of guys are doing that, not just him, but he's just a guy that kind of pops off the screen because usually Manny Machado is not leading your, leading the team in steel. So uh, one to bring up. But, I mean, just overall, it just seems like the Padres, it, it's, it feels like the organization seems so much more professional with Bob Melvin at the helm. So got to give you know a, a, a big round of applause for him. But Chase, anything you add, want to add, add on uh, the conversation for Bob Melvin? No, man. I mean, we really can't criticize him in any way. I mean, like I said, look at the hand he's been dealt early on in the season. You don't have your superstar shortstop. You have a rookie in Abrams who's been inconsistent. You have three outfielders who aren't hitting their body weight. You lost Myers. You don't have Voight. And even when you had those two, they were Voight struggling more than Myers. I mean, Voight still looking to find his timing. I mean, if you looked at his stats coming in the minor leagues right now coming off his rehab he had like nine strikeouts in a row outside of Machado and Hosmer I don't think there's a guy hitting above 250 he's been amazing the pitchers love him everyone loves him he hasn't made a real bad decision he's backed up his players I mean he's been everything we've wanted in a manager for the past five years and more I mean, I, we. this is what it f- feels like to have a real manager for the first time in, what, six, seven years? It's insane to me. Yeah, it feels like, I mean, the only the first manager that I really watched was Bud Black. So he's but only my fourth manager I've watched, I want to say. Um, so I haven't, I haven't really seen a ton because Bud Black was, was holding down the fort for a while in San Diego. But Bob Melvin has been awesome so far, um, and I'm very, very happy that, that he's the guy that's actually at the helm this year because I think we, you know, that was one of the things we were t- kind of talking about with the organization is like there's a new pitching coach or hitting coach every single year. There's not a lot of stability. Guys last year it didn't feel like they respected Jace Tingler. Um, and I feel like I'm ripping Jace Tingler a lot, not really trying to. It's it's over. It's not a big deal anymore. But I, I feel like that's the guy you compare him to, right, naturally, the guy that was there before him. So, um but I just think this has been, you know, a fantastic start, and so I'm, I'm very pumped for for where the Padres are at. Now they do have a pretty big uh, road stand coming up, where it's it's going to be tough. I mean, they play the Braves, and and early on the schedule's been light. They're about to play the Braves, Phillies, and Giants, so I think you might see the record come back to earth a little bit. But we also have to remember this team is missing their heart and soul and the, the MVP of their team right now, and you're nine games over 500, 29 games into the year, so. I mean, you can't really ask for more than that to start the year, even if it is a light schedule. Um, and if they can just keep their head above water until Fernando comes back and maybe a little be a little bit over 500, that's a lot better than it could be. And Chase, you brought up all the different struggles, all the different. You, know, you talked about the the cards the cards he's been dealt. It hasn't been perfect to say the least. I mean, you have some guys that are drastically struggling in this lineup and still manufacturing runs. And this team is top ten in runs. 
and all of their other offensive categories outside of on base are below 20 for the most part. So, you know, you're finding a way to manufacture runs. You're letting your, you're riding with your starters. It's working really well. Um, so very, very happy with this team um, and very, very happy with Bob Melvin so far. So I want to do a quick, quick appreciation video for him, but I think that's going to do it for, for today's episode. Uh, I think we're going to be doing a live stream tomorrow, but I'll let you guys know, um, comment any other future videos you want us to do, you know, throughout the season, it's a little bit weird with different segments just because it's hard to kind of catch up. And usually it's more of like series to series is talking about the performance of the team. But if there's anything you want us to cover, make sure to comment that below, but thank you all for listening and we'll talk to you guys tomorrow.